everybody, we've got a great video for you today because we are talking about two iconic off-roaders, one of which is brand new. That's right, Jeep has brought the game back to Ford again with a new model, and in this video we are talking about the Jeep Wrangler 20th anniversary versus Bronco Raptor. Yeah, they keep making things interesting by trying to progressively one-up each other, so there's a lot to talk about between this Rubicon 20th anniversary and the Bronco Raptor, a lot of pros and cons. So, of course, Bronco and um, Wrangler or CJ have been two of the most iconic off-road nameplates in history. Oh yeah. And for a lot of years they fought it out and then um, Ford left the game in the mid-90s. Jeep kept building what they changed the CJ to, the Wrangler, through the 90s and then the early 2000s and of course the 2010s and then Ford reintroduced the, um, the, the Bronco back to the market for the 2021 model year as a direct competitor to the Wrangler. So Wrangler responded with the 392, yeah. right? And then Ford responded with the Bronco Raptor and now Jeep has responded responded again with a new model. Yeah, and this new 20th anniversary, well, the question is, is it enough to compete with the Bronco Raptor? So should we dive into some of the details about it? Yeah, so my dad and Andre were just in Chicago and they got to see these vehicles up close and personal. And we'll include some footage here so you can kind of see what they look like. But essentially we're looking at two different Jeep models. First of all, the, the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 20th anniversary edition. And what does that give you? So there's only 4,000 of them, so it gives you some exclusivity. Uh, it's also available in either a 4xe or a 392, which is nice. You get a half inch lift, a revised grille, and you get an 83 piece toolkit as well as a triple hoop grill guard. Yeah, that's right. So it sits a little bit taller. It's got some visual differences. It kind of has this funny front end where it looks like a grill within a grill. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's an expensive vehicle. So of course the Rubicon came out in 2003 on the uh, TJ, right, Wrangler, the little yeah. Wrangler back in the day. And it's been a, a nameplate now for a bunch of years. So they're celebrating it with the 20th anniversary of that, but you do pay for it. So the 4xe starts at 71,380. So that's right, $71,000. And what does the V8 start at? $92,690, which, I mean, all of the 392s are expensive, but this one especially so. So this is a kind of a cool options package, right? On top of a standard Rubicon. Um, obviously you can get it with the, those big uh, extreme recon tires and such. However, it doesn't really up the game that much compared to a Bronco Raptor. They didn't really do that much. So Jeep actually has another model that they just unveiled the most expensive Wrangler in history, the most expensive Wrangler ever. And what is that one? Well, if you want to level up your 20th anniversary Rubicon, <laughs> you literally can because it's the level two 20th anniversary Rubicon by AEV. So then you get a two and a half inch suspension lift, 37 inch KO2s, you get special bumpers, skid plates, off-road lights, 14.2 inches of ground clearance. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. So basically yeah. what they did is, uh, this is a factory um, equipped vehicle, by the way, right? So this is something you can go to your dealer and buy. Um, it's uh, it's the ultimate off-road Wrangler that you can buy from a dealer. So it's it's got all of the possible off-road goodies you can get and then some. So uh, the biggest tire you can get previously 35, you can get the AEV with the 37 and you can get it with all the AEV goodies. So including the winch and the bumper and the skid plates and um, all of their, their, their well-known and established off-road gear. AEV stands for American Expedition Vehicles, one of the leading producers of off-road kits and they're partnering now with Jeep to, to bring us this model. But uh, uh, additionally, it has a 33 degree uh, breakover angle and a 43 degree departure angle. Yeah, yeah, that 50 degrees of approach, 43 departure, it's really impressive for rock crawling, as is 14.2 inches of ground clearance. But it's about $20,000 additional to get all of this spec from the factory. So that would total out to um, about $92,000 for the 4xe and $114,000 almost for the, four, the 392. So wow. Over a hundred ten thousand dollars money, yeah. for a Wrangler, and they're only building a hundred and fifty. So this is a pretty exclusive um, vehicle, and if you want one of these, um, there are uh, currently you know a vehicle you can reserve at your local dealership. I'm not sure if they're sold out. Reservations went live a couple of weeks ago, but let's talk about how this stacks up to the Bronco Raptor. Yeah, so the Bronco Raptor also has 37-inch tires, uh, but one of the major differences between all Broncos and Wranglers, independent front suspension. However, on the Bronco Raptor, you get an uprated Dana 50 solid axle in the rear. You also get uprated half shafts in the front. 
And then in terms of some of the specs, it's 13.1 inches of ground clearance. So a little bit less ground clearance. You have, uh, what, 47.2 degrees of approach, 30.8 break over, 40.5 departure. So the ground clearance and the angles for rock crawling aren't quite as good as the level two AEV Jeep Wrangler, but some of the nice things, 13 inches of travel in the front, 14 inches of travel in the rear, yeah. thanks in part to Fox Live Valve 3.1 inch diameter shocks. So if you wanna do fast desert running, that's a good way to go. Absolutely, yeah. And um, 4,500 pounds of towing in the Bronco Raptor, so more towing capacity than the Jeep as well. But it's important to know that these are kind of going after two different worlds. So the Wrangler is really going after the ultimate rock crawler, right? Solid axle, um, sway bar disconnect, yeah. which which of course is an option that the Bronco has been well known for too. But um, you know, with the front solid axle, you get a lot of articulation. This is built to like conquer the largest rocks with the most ground clearance and do it slowly. Whereas the Bronco Raptor can do that, but it's more tailored for high speed desert running. Yeah, and that's reflected in the specs and in the hardware. Um, so what about the engine? What's the engine in the Bronco Raptor? You have a three liter V6, 400 horsepower. So not as not as good of options, you could argue, as the plug-in hybrid with the 4xe or having a big old monstrous 6.4 liter V8. Yep, so the plug-in hybrid makes 375 horsepower and then that huge 6.4 V8 in the Jeep makes 470. Yeah, and also comes with the fantastic noise that's associated with having a big V8. So you could argue that in terms of powertrain, the Wrangler is more versatile. Yeah, that's right. I mean, and if you are looking for a vehicle to use as your commuter, as your family hauler, as your everyday vehicle, and you might be looking for that because these vehicles are now so unbelievably expensive, then having, you know, in the standard Wranglers, like 20 miles of range, when you put 37s on it in the and AV. And steel bumpers and, yeah, I mean, I would guess, I don't know, you know, we'll have to test it, but 10, 15 miles of range probably. Yeah. Which is still, you know, better still than good. nothing. Yeah, it'll still yeah. get you maybe one way to work on electricity alone, and it'll still help in city traffic situations. Um, and then, of course, if you want the sound, the yeah. Wrangler is going to have a much better sound with the V8. Yeah, I mean, a 392 Wrangler is one of just the most unhinged vehicles to drive. They're fantastically fun. Yeah. So there's a lot to be said about the powertrain options in the Wrangler. Um, but uh, the Bronco offers a lot of sophistication in the suspension department. So that is one of the best riding vehicles I've ever driven. It offers a tremendous amount of capability with the uh, the, uh, the independent front suspension in terms of on-road use. I think it's gonna be a little better on-road. It's gonna handle a little bit better, right? We're also talking about a much wider vehicle, something like nine inches wider than the standard Bronco. Yeah, which you could argue is, is good or Depending bad, on where I mean, you live, yeah. If you're looking to go fast off-road, it's great. If you're yeah. trying to squeeze through some trees, not so great. I mean, even the, the regular Sasquatch Bronco is already a pretty wide machine and it can get a little hairy with that nice expensive paint on some tighter trails. Now, pricing for the Bronco Raptor starts at like 76,580. Um, realistically, with options, it's gonna be in the mid 80s and that's before dealer markups. Yeah, and that's the thing with any one of these, right. especially with the limited numbers too on the Wrangler, but even with the Raptor and all of the markups that are going on right now, all of these are unobtainium, but it yeah. is still fun to look at. That's the frustrating thing. I mean, this video is so fun to produce, but it's frustrating that people can't <laughs> actually go out and buy these Yeah. because um, Bronco Raptor allocations, very hard to get, very few between. Yeah. Um, these Jeeps only building 150 of them. So it's, it's cool to talk about, but it's just frustrating that you can't just walk into your dealer, order it, pay sticker, and then walk out, you know, a few weeks not, later. Not even close. We saw a uh, we saw a Bronco Raptor for sale not too far from here for $112,000. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I'm sure we're going to see some ADM too on the uh, the 392 oh, yeah. by AAV as well. So if it was your money, right, say you had 100 grand laying around, you wanted to maybe buy uh, a, a, the ultimate off-roader, would you be looking at the Bronco Raptor? Would you be looking at the Wrangler? You know, if I lived in the desert, if I lived near the desert, maybe it would be a different story. But being here in Colorado and also loving that 392, ideally, I would do a, a level two AEV 392, but I also don't have nearly $114,000 <laughs> to spend on something, so. <laughs> I um, I can't wait to drive that level two. I'm really hoping that it, it's, a, it's a fun vehicle yeah. and hopefully we'll have it at the Easter Jeep Safari here in a few weeks. I'm kind of leaning more toward Bronco Raptor. I love the high speed ability of that vehicle. I love the adaptive Fox suspension on that vehicle. Yeah. And I think it offers a very distinctive look. So the AEV definitely looks cool, but it doesn't look much different than any other modded Wrangler, True. right? Whereas a Bronco Raptor with the flares, which look a little silly, 
but the, the marker lights and the, yeah. the crazy graphics, right? You that looks different. different. Yeah. But let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Which one would you choose the most expensive Wrangler ever or the most expensive probably Bronco ever? Yeah. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.